Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. And I can't choose Oh, yeah. hey, hey, folks. Well, we signed a uh, nice uh, oh, 17 year contract. Don't I, tell him we I fucked blew up. It. We were going to be stuck in this shit box for another six years. We heard the, the cries of the studio stinks. We were all set to go back to the house. Uh, save on the some wall. money. There's semen over here. Yeah. Shelby commented, by the way. Oh, he did? Sweet. Yeah, he's like, that was me. They're not going to be happy about that. <laughs> all uh, right, good to know you're alive, Shelby. We love you, Shelby. We miss you, Shelby, desperately. Come back, please, please. for the love of God. Come on my back. But yeah, this room, it's closing in. I feel like I'm a billionaire in a submarine. We're going down and he can't get out. It's no good. It does. It feels like that scene in the first Star Wars where it's cramming yes, in. Yes, yes. Uh, the that, compactor. That was always scary. Terrifying. Remember he put the big rod in the middle and it did nothing? <laughs> Rocks beep, and beep, cones beep, are all screwed up. Yeah, that was my R2. But uh, hashtag R2. Me, me too, R2. I don't know. It was a stretch. That's but, when you get uh, diddled by a retarded person. <laughs> All right, keep it moving. Well, there goes this money for this week. What do you don't you get defunded? The oh, police? Yeah. Well, we made it two minutes. Isn't there a two minute cut? Yeah, I think so. I don't think it's two minutes, but uh, okay. Defund the police. Good call, everybody. Great <laughs> call. Glad you guys came up with that. Good slogan, you Woo! fucking nitwits. Yeah, tell that to San Francisco. Any, I'm going to. I'm on my way to Portland. I'm shitting bricks oh, over here. Oh, you, you better bring a needle and a shield because <laughs> you're gonna have to throw the needle and then hide. I got a bed and breakfast in Eugene. I'm gonna commute. <laughs> I can't be in that town. <laughs> Phil Knight over here. Eugene Levy. Um, <laughs> when the levy breaks. Levi jeans. New Orleans. That must have been really traumatizing, huh? Yeah, it wasn't pretty. And I, we, I was staying an hour away in, in uh, Baton Rouge, and your parents had to come live with it. That could be a sitcom. I'm living with five guys in a house. It's trashed. It's beer pong. It's uh, poker every night. You know, cigars, women. And then my parents are like, hello, we're here. And they drop their bags, and all my friends are like, oh, shit. They're doing putting the... Coke off the table, you know, and this is a film. We should write this. That's not bad. They got their pants are all rolled up. Their shoes are wet, you yes. know, because they came from the thing. They got whatever's left. They lost <laughs> all your good stuff. They're like, right. "This is what we saved for you." And it's like a, a pinwheel hat. And yeah, you're like, "Where's my porn? Where's my DVDs?" Oh yeah, my comic books I collected, my baseball Ooh. cards, all the the action figures. That's all gone. Comic books. Yeah, well, I was, I was a youth. Yeah, right. I oh. never read one, but I thought they were worth something. I know. I like comic. I, I I see how I could be into comic, but like you go to the store and it's similar to like the bookstore or yes. the DVD store or the the baseball card. You're like, oh, collectible. Yes. It's it's draw. You're like, whoa. And then you open it and you're like, what am I doing? What is this? Exactly. Exactly. I stepped in green stuff and I'm a lion now. <laughs> you're like, shut up. That's so true. Yeah, you're right. Now I'm putting on this mask and I'm swinging from building to building. I'm like. I'm out. Yeah, get real. Rupert's getting triggered over here. He's trembling. Well, it's weird, too, because just you got teenagers. Give me finger popping. You know, give me a, oh, I, I said something bad to a black kid. Now this is weird. But it's all fake shit. Yeah, I, that's right. Even at like nine, I was into The Godfather. I was like, right, this is fun. Right. It's like a father, some sons, some murder, a, a knife in the hand. Loved it, loved it. It looked pretty. It was, the music was good. The acting was good. It felt like a, it felt like reality. Yeah, and then people were like, did you see the new Batman episode? I'm like, no, you dork. I know. I, I, I watched Star Wars. My, all my friends were into Star Wars, and I liked it for the Lucas. I was like, let's, let's lean in on this guy. What's mm. his story? Well, he went to film school. He's gay. He's a nerd. That's the fun stuff. Yeah, when I was a kid, I really was into Star Wars very much as a as a boy. Oh, yeah, I was like, I was obsessed. But then as you get older, you're kind of like, well, I like Goodfellas. Right. Well, I still like a Star Wars. You put it on, and it's great still, shot, Gold Leader. Yeah, it's a solid movie, and they built a world. You got to hand it to them for building a world. But uh, Goodfellas was a that shit happened. Basically. That was a real world. Well, here's what I got to you show. hand it to them for the world. But I take back the hand. 
for just keeping the world. It's like 30 years later. They're like, now it's Baby Yoda. I'm like, create oh, a new world. Well, that's 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 now. That's the movie theaters now. They're all fucked. They're void of creativity, and they got no balls. Took some balls to go, hey, this is a droid, huh? This is a C-3PO. Who? What? That's a lot of crazy shit to throw at somebody. I agree. I, I like it. It was fun. Well, you should write this uh, hurricane movie. Telling you, Hurricane we, Parents. We could bang out a movie in, in three hours. I don't drink anymore. Well, we've tried this, but we always wrote it at a bar. I know, as an alcoholic maniac. Yeah. Now I think we could really... Bloop. Okay, I'm down. We could, what about a short? We'll start with a short. Start with a short. See, we'll go Brad Williams and work our way up to, to Segura. I love a short. I'm wearing a short. So. There you go. And uh, the, the hard thing, we've talked about this before, off air... It's hard for us to write, I think, and not have it sound exactly like a Seinfeld. I know. I That's know. what's tricky. Yeah. It's like the parents are going to come in and be like, it's wet out there. And you're like, why is it going to be wet? Yeah. What does that mean, yeah. wet? Women get wet. That's good when women get wet, but when a city gets wet, it's really bad. You know. It's, it's going to be hard. But we can, we can just shake each other. Yes, yes. Michael J. We'll shake. Shake it off. Maybe you can play your parents. Ooh, I can do Dad. I'm Rick Normand. All you really want to do is cast a movie. It's yes. kind of like it's kind of like uh, Dane Cook had that joke. It's like I don't want to have kids. I just want to name something. Ooh, that's good. I think it's like you don't want to write a movie. You just want to cast it. Yes, cast system. I'm with you. I like to cast. I've worn a cast. See, I'm already back on Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> we can't do it. Cast All right, away. I'm cast a gay. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a title. A hurricane. Blow me. Blow Ooh, me. Dead. Blow me down. Blow me dead. That's um, not bad. Uh, when the levee breaks is taken. Yeah, levee. We watched that recently. Oh, yeah? It's yeah. a little heavy-handed. Yeah, it's tough. It's a lot. It's more about race than the actual city being ruined. Uh -huh. right? But that's for another show. Maybe a, boy, uh, maybe a pod where you rape movies. Rape movies? Rate. Ah. Uh, um, I saw Talk to the Hand. What's it called again? Talk to me. Talk to, Talk me. to, Talk to me. Rupert We got Rupert sitting in for Chuck. Hey, I Rupert. like Talk to me. And uh, Ron hated it. Rupert hates it. So maybe I'm an idiot. Well, you tend to like a movie where there's no stakes. Hmm. You're a vegetarian. You like a movie where it's the you know Oppenheimer. It's like here it is. It's gonna save cinema. It's gonna save your marriage. Right. It's gonna bring the country back together. And you're like, it's a little high, uh, highfalutin. You know, it's too much to build up to. But I this like, was low shit. I like small. And also with this film, I don't want to turn this into Siskel and Ebert, but. With this film, I thought it was going to be just a regular popcorn horror movie. Right. The spirits got me. But it's quite layered. There's, That's what there's I'm saying. There's a lot of stuff in there. And I was like, wow, this is really something. And it's, it's fucked up and violent and fun. And I, I, I thought it was good and fun. But yeah. maybe I'm an asshole. We well, had low expecte. And then when it's decent, you're like, hey, all right, this is fun. Horror movies, it's a great time for horror movies, I think. Horror movies are killing because they're cheap. They're cheap and and they they just work and I think they're okay with making twelve million dollars. Right. These other movies, if they make twelve million dollars, like we failed, we're assholes, we should kill ourselves. Yeah, I watched the whole thing. I went on a YouTube rabbit hole, wormhole, butthole. All three work. Okay. I'll eat any one of them. I went on a uh, YouTube a asshole and uh, it had a whole thing about Babylon. Why Babylon. did Babylon fail? What's Babylon? That was the Margot Rob. Oh, I love that film. I loved it too. You liked it, Roop? Yeah. Roop liked well, it. All right, there we go. We're all in agreement. But it, it's cost 150 million. It made 15, and they're like, "What the hell?" And the whole thing was about how Barbie killed it, and Margot Robbie's back because uh -huh. she had two. Amsterdam was like a shit bomb. Oh, that looked bad. Wasn't that David O. Russell? Yes. Yeah. Who was thinks. on a good run for a minute? Yeah. And then uh, that bomb, but that that was actually bad. But Babylon, I loved. Yeah, I mean, there's some problems with Babylon. Is it called Babylon? I oh, totally yeah. forgot the name of the movie. We're at a weird age now. Where were uh, we, your kid, where you say you saw a movie? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that speaking of layered. I said it the other day. You sound your farts sound like a kid coming in on a bike on sand. Like he's like, <laughs> yeah, that's me. But uh, he skidded off that bike on that one. Where were when your kids? Everyone's like, you guys see Terminator 2? And I remembered being this kid. Yeah. At being like nine years old and being like, everyone saw Terminator 2. And they were talking about it. And I was like, I loved it. Hasta la vista, baby. Because yeah. I would just do lines from the trailer. Because oh, I hadn't seen it. No. But back then, if somebody said they'd seen a movie and they didn't remember anything from it, you knew they were lying. Right. But now we're in our 40s or almost 40s, a couple weeks. 
Oh. Jesus. I'll be in Dublin. Tally ho. Oh, Dublin. I'll be 40 in Dublin. Top but of the Irish. Top of the morning. Top of the morning. Top I, of the heap. Emerald Isle. A number one. There you go. Uh, the, God, those women in Ireland. Your Woo! wife coming? <sighs> She never does. Oh, but uh, no, she's uh, come for half of it. Okay. I just, just want to look at them. Just I just want to see half. the black hair with the green eye. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes that piercing blue, the black hair, light eyes. It's, you know what it does to me, Jerry? Oh, it's it, speaking of wet. But yeah, the uh, Doug Key's coming. So I'm just going to go, you fuck, and I'll watch. God damn those Irish women. I just, uh, it's a real thing with me. That yes. jet black hair, those crystal blue eyes, Ooh. sometimes a green and. Forget about it. Uh, the God. banshees of the Indian. I just want to shave the top of their soap. God, there are something. What the hell was I saying? Oh, but now, oh, anyways. Oh, Babby. Now, I'm, I'm 58 years old. I'm like, I saw that movie. And you're like, what'd you think? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> oh, right, Because you've right. seen so many movies. You legitimately have seen movies that you're like, I don't remember anything that happened in that goddamn film. Yeah, so true. I, I remember most of it because she, she's very scantily clad in it. So that was helpful. But yes. it's so big. It's an epic, Jerry. You know, the, the elephant and the Brad Pitts and the whole thing. The big production, big extras. Uh, and I loved it, but it, it just... Bombed. I had several problems with it. I remember Brad Pitt? I just remember it. Brad Pitt kills himself, but he like feels he accepts everything right before. Like he actually is like, we make movies. I love making movies. Well, he was lying it's to great. himself, and then he just shoots himself, and it felt very abrupt. It felt very easy. It also is the the plot of Sound of Music, and then they just throw a clip of Sound of Music in there to be like, oh, yeah. oh, I didn't catch like, that. I guess you can do that. But wow. I still loved it. It's big and fun and epic and wild. Is that the Hills Are Alive? The hills are no. That's sound of music. That's what I'm saying. Is that what I said? Yes. I say, oh boy. Singing in the rain. Sorry. Oh, singing in the rain. Okay. <laughs> Blame it on the rain. <laughs> singing in the rain, not sound of music. Woo! I'm not familiar with sound of music, but singing in the rain is right at the top of the heap. I gotta watch that. Sound of music is good too, and it's all singing, but it's a real Nazi ribbon going through it. Oh. Ah. It's all about the Nazis. Oh, no kidding. But it's about this dumb family, the Van Trops. Well, Sing in the Rain is uh, amazing. Really? Yeah. Great runtime, funny, great music, great dancing. I just know that, that scene where he's singing in the rain. He, he stands on the uh, uh-huh. the, the post, the, uh, the telephone. I'm singing. Gene Kelly, my Kelly. all-time male crush. Really? Yeah, great bod, great face, great talent. Well, he's got Kelly in there, so you're halfway at home. But it's also George Carlin's idol. No, that's Danny K. Danny K. Sorry, I'm. He's gay. the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ben Crosby tap dance with Danny fucking K. Danny K makes an appearance at Goodfellas. Really? Yeah, when they're searching the house, she goes. It was better to call the lawyer and let him in the house. That's Danny K. She's watching the TV and it, it, it pushes oh, on Danny K. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. I got gotcha. you. She's watching Danny K while they search the house. Isn't it crazy to think like you know we were around in the '80s? Sure. In the '80s. I remember watching Honeymooners on my TV. I remember being a, you know, a fetus watching Honeymooners. I didn't know what it was, but it was like, to the moon, Alice, black and white, Jackie Gleason. Because the Honeymooners was from the what? The 50s? The 50s, yeah. So that's only 30 years before. So that would be like watching... Family Ties. Yeah. Or Cosby Show. Or Cosby Show. Yes, exactly. Which is not... I mean, you don't. no one sits around watching the Cosby Show now because you'd fall asleep. But it could be on. Right, or Cheers. Cheers! It's on the plane. There you go. Perfect example. Cheers. So that's weird. It's not that weird, but it's just crazy how far we've progressed. Well, that's it is. I think about this all the time. He's like, I grew up watching the Brady Bunch, even though it was on in the 70s. Same, same. I grew up watching I Love Lucy, and even right. though it was on in the 50s. But that's like, my mother was watching it, so that's what I watched. Yeah, and don't get me started on Nick at Night. Nick at Night was going to F Troop and uh, Dobie Gillis and all that shit. Yeah, and uh, what do you call it? The uh, and, Andy, and, uh, I'm thinking of Andy Griffin. Van Slyke. No, Dick Van Dyke. Dick Van, Dick Van, Dyke. Van Dyke we loved, and I remember being a kid and being like, he writes for a TV show. That's so exciting. Oh, yeah. That was like, I remember being like eight years old and talking to my cousin Kim, being like, I want to write for a TV show. I remember asking her, like, have you seen Dick Van Dyke? Right. And she was like, Dick Van Dyke. I jumps <laughs> one in my ass, but. <laughs> yeah, she's a dyke. Who said it the other day? I forget. I'm stealing this point from somebody else, but two thirds of the words you're not allowed to say on TV. Wow. Dick and Dyke. That's gold. Isn't that crazy? That's great. That's really something. Who's that? Salacuse, I think, said it. Wow. I think it was Salacuse. Yeah, that feels like a cues. Yeah. 
You know what Matt Wayne calls them? Salad goose, which makes me laugh. I like salad goose. Salad goose. That's fun. You know, Mel Brooks said, the best comedy is when you don't filter your brain at all. You just let the shit come out of your head. And that's a salad goose. Just You just let something come out of your head, and it's funny. Matt Wayne is uh, the funniest person I know. I mean, like, he's one of these guys you're just rolling. And he's one of these guys, too. You're like, that's a bit. And he's like, is it? Yeah. I'm, like, I'm howling over here. I'm driving off the road. He's effortless. Yes. Very funny guy. He's yeah. shooting a special in a couple weeks or in October or something. Oh, finally. It's about goddamn time. Yeah. He's, he's special. But uh, I watched uh, Mary Tyler Moore has a documentary. I said, let me put I watched this that. on. Okay. So attracted to her. Oh, she was something. But it's so <sighs> crazy because she's doing some interview in 1958 or whatever. And she's they're like, the guy won't let her speak. And he's talking over her. And he's like, well, women, they, so they talk too much, which is funny because he's talking too much. And she goes, this is going to be kind of controversial. But she's like, I think a lot of women want to work. And she's like, I'm sorry I said that. You're like, wow, look how far we've come. Because now it's like trans people are interesting. Oh, edit that. You know, right. but back then saying women should work right. was crazy. Yes. She's a, she's a full-figured gal. I think she's oh, gorgeous. And, gorgeous. Uh, Beautiful face. Show. I never got into that show. I couldn't figure it out. It's like the certain shows. Dick Van Dyke, he was so... Uh, Digestible. I got it. He was silly and, and fun, and he was. Yeah. I was like, I, I I like this show. And then he was working with writers, so they were coming up with jokes. So uh-huh. I was like, ha, ha, ha. yeah. And he was so goofy. Ugh. Everything was so animated, and it was it was it was a little broad. But Carl Reiner kept he he invented Dick Van Dyke. Yes. And then he said you have to put. He was supposed to be Dick, but he was. They did a pilot. He was too Jewy, he so stunk. they had to put the goy with the Jew writer. Oh, goy. Yeah, well, that exactly. was. The st- and they said, "Well, you're gonna do the Dick Van Dyke show." And he said, "What's a Dick Van Dyke?" Ah, there you go. And yeah, they said, well, "We got a better guy to play you." Ooh, it's pretty funny. Ouch! But still, was the head honcho. Yeah, that was like. Uh, sorry, we're off on crazy tangents now, but I'm having a good time. Oh yeah, that was like one of these the earliest concept of a sitcom. They were like Carl Reiner had written for your show of shows with Sid Caesar, right? And they were like, "We're gonna do a sitcom. We want yes. to do a sitcom." And he's like, "Well, I don't know what I have any ideas, but." All I do is I write for a comedy show. Exactly. And I live in Levittown. Exactly. And they're like, that's the show. And that became the foundation of all these shows. There you go. And Seinfeld's I, like, well, I'm a comedian. I got some buddies. I live in New York City in an apartment. Boom. We got a show. That's the show. There's your show. There's your show. Why am I not? Am I going to watch it? It's on TV. Not yet. Thank you. What a program. Hell yeah. Anyways, oh. we, we didn't see you there. This is just, <laughs> this is the most regular conversation that's we've true. ever had on the podcast. True. We might have sped it up times two a little bit for uh, you guys. but yeah. yeah, that's true. Normally I'm just staring at the ground saying I want to kill myself. There's a lot of that. We, we usually edit those out yeah, just for time. Do? But anyways, it's good to see you. My father's gay and uh, George is saying cut it. Where are the cameras? And uh, squirrels eat hawks, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> we should tell them you, uh, what we did earlier or are we saving that for the bonus no let's put it out there and, and we'll tease it right it's gonna go up in the patreon you gotta send your half of the video to uh i already sent chuck it. okay that's your half <laughs> my half's gone <laughs> not a third of an apple not a half a banana <laughs> you bite it you bought it oh man Woo, that's good she's a full-figured gal but yeah um so you caught a mouse in your house. I did, and it reminded me of I had a big chunk of material. Don't you love this feeling? Is there anything better than this? You have a chunk. It's working. You forget about it. And then a couple weeks later, you're like, oh, we got a mouse. And Sarah's like, what happened to that bit uh, you were doing? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I had a three-minute mouse chunk. That's not on anything? No, I just lost it. Wow, so you just got three new minutes without doing anything. Yes, I just scooped it up. You scooped uh, the niblets. She scooped the niblets. Okay. <laughs> So, any jizz, we have a last night, and it, this was scary because we're sitting there watching a film or TV, whatever bullshit. Mm. I can't remember what the hell we were watching, or maybe we were just sitting there talking. All right. And then there's the little crack in the door. It was like No Country for Old Men. There's that little light under the crack. Oh, and yeah. Sarah does this. She's like, I think someone's outside of our apartment. Huh. This is a little shadow. Yeah. Because he's backlit, so it casts a shadow. Ugh. And I'm like, there's no one outside of our apartment, you fucking weirdo. And I had just seen a horror movie, Talk to the Hand. Oh, yeah, Talk to the Mouse. <laughs> so she's like, yeah, there's something over there. And all of a sudden, he just he's boneless, so he just goes like, he's like a chicken tender. He just goes like, <laughs> and comes underneath. She's like, there's a mouse in the house. Oh, that's a ruiner. And I go, okay, don't worry. Now, I'm an expert, because we get a mouse like almost exactly once a year. Yeah, that's true. Maybe you kicked the last one in the face. Yes, I kicked him right up the fucking road and killed his stupid, boneless, bullshit body. Got Lionel Messi over here, huh, folks? Um, so I went over there, and I said, don't worry. And, you know, I feel like a man. I'm like, don't worry. 
put your tits in order. They like the man. I click on the lights, and I got two kill them traps. Mm. I set those up. I get the peanut butter. I put it on my cock. Let the dog lick it off. Now I'm ready to put the traps out. <laughs> Hope it's not crunchy. <laughs> so I put. Um, I get put the smooth. Tra- and we, if you got get smooth, <laughs> cherry. Um, <laughs> I'm but, not cleaning two knives. All right, sorry. We're off on a Regan tan. I got the tube over here. Tuby. Oh, uh, Jeffrey Tubin. So um, I got one of these Wait, tubes. Wait, this is a different tube. This is the tube I just had. It's the same tube. Oh. Same tube. I got one of these things, a little yeah. dirty. And uh, get yourself one of these. It works because we caught him last time with this. You uh-huh. put the peanut butter in here, and then he climbs right in there, and then it snaps up. I think you got to set it. There oh, there it you go. You get him in there, and then he just lives in there. But wow. you got to take him like a mile from your house. Right. So I put him in this satchel, brought him in here to uh, page. Manhattan, mm-hmm. and I had to ride in the subway. I had it all sealed like this, like a, like money bags. Wow. And I'm on Scrooge. the crowded five train, just holding him up here. I can feel him scurrying wow. the whole time. And uh, brought him here to the big city, the Big Apple. Well, he made it. He just commuted. Exactly. And uh, so I grabbed you. We videotaped it. It's going to be on the Patreon. It's about 48 seconds long. Yeah, but we got two angles. It's me hiding on a U-Haul up on the the, the back (laughs) trunk, and then you letting it fly, and then that thing scurried like a refugee out of Mexico. But it's... Same neighborhood all the refugees are in, by the way. Ah. They're not called that anymore. They're called asylum seekers. Uh, we got to so. make everything longer. Well, it's nice. I guess. Well, what about mental asylum? They're seeking. I wouldn't mind a big, big mental asylum right in Manhattan and just shift <laughs> Sixth Avenue back to the to us. Oh, I wish. You know, they're bringing them back. Or this one of the uh, candidates said we're going to bring back mental asylum because crime, if you look at the stats, they went way up when they got rid of them. Yeah. It's like a complete... Perfect. Uh, of course, Reagan. Ah, uh, but I know the state analysts—they were fucked up. But Brian yeah, Reagan. bring them back. Put some of these people in there, and a lot of them you can just treat them with medicine. Yeah, the bipolar, whatever. Give them a pill. Bloop. And yeah. then you know we don't have these, so many fucking lunatics. It's weird how the citizens are medicating, and I think it's fucking them up. And the hobos are not medicating, and they need it. Right. Huh. I think a lot of this, it's bipolar, it's, uh, what's the other one? Schizophrenia. Schizophrenic and... Um, Manic. The, there's one, too, that's called border. Borderline. borderline. Borderline personality. Yeah, you're right. That is big. And some of these people, you, you give them some, some treats and a meal and a thing, and then uh, you put them in the hospital, and then you come over like cuckoo's nest, but without the lobotomies and the nurse ratchet. Yeah, yeah. Well, did you hear that... Uh... Amish have no autism, Is no right? no mental illness, and no hay fever, and a couple other things. They have zero cases of it. They gotta have mental illness. That's crazy. Yeah, it seems I might have. It's gotta be that a nervous in. Amish guy somewhere. That's true. The barn's not raising. <laughs> I mean, that's a good point. Yeah, some someone's depressed. Maybe someone's it, sad. Maybe it was it was retardation. They had something that was they had zero uh, autism. Anxiety. Sorry, it's the last R. I'm sure they got something, but they, they also they might not know how to report it. Uh-huh. They might not have the word. They're like, "How you you, you guys? Any, any of you depressed?" And they're like, "What?" Yeah. <laughs> they never heard these words. Yeah, they're like depressed. That's my aunt. But it's an interesting thing. I mean, I send me that uh, article. I wouldn't mind. I will. Uh, I will. It was fascinating. Dabbling, but uh, but anyways, yeah, we got to take care of these people. What do you think of this? You said asylum seeker. Mm-hmm. It feels like if you lengthen a word. I think that was a Carlin bit, like African American. It just sounds better, you know. It used yeah. to be shell shock. Shell shock. Now yeah. it's uh, post traumatic post- stress there you go. disorder. But homosexual is the only one that's longer that seems meaner. Like uh, if you go, "Hey, this is my friend. He's gay." You're like, "Oh, okay." One syllable. But if you're like, "This is my friend. He's a homosexual," <laughs> it does sound like you're like yes. he's, a, he's an experiment or something. Well, homosexual is out now. I think. Oh, is that that's out? Bad. Yeah, what? homosexual is bad. I didn't know that. That's yeah. what they are. I think we had this dialogue before because I remember a bunch of people being like, fuck you, you idiot, as though I came up with this. I know this is all me. No, no, they're saying it like I'm the one that was like, homosexual's bad. I'm like, this oh, is just what I read. Oh, people I were see. like, fuck you, homosexual's not bad, you fucking <laughs> idiot. And I'm like, well, I, I'm not making the decisions. Right, right. The, the queefs are. It's kind of like when people are like, you're like, yeah, climate change is crazy. People are like, you're, it's not fucking real, you piece <laughs> of shit. And I'm like, well, I didn't come up with the theory. Yeah, That's, yeah. Stephen Hawking wrote right. about it, not me. I don't know. <laughs> Yell at him. It's headline news. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I think a homosexual is like uh, is no good. Oh, I th- I thought that was just like 
that's what they are. They're homosexuals. Like that, I'm a heterosapien or whatever. Homo sapien. You're a heterosexual. You're. These are just facts. I think we'll have to give give that a Google, Rupert, if you yeah. don't mind. Homosexual bad. Give it a Rupert. Bad homosexuals. And <laughs> see if my face pops up. <laughs> but uh, but no, that's a good point. Monus had a point, and someone told me Ruby might have the same bit, mm, which Jack. I haven't told Monus yet. Is uh, he had a great one about? Maybe you've heard it. How queer. Is the only word that was a slur. It became Ruby has good. That bit. Uh, I got. I got to let Monus know. It's a good. It's actually a, a solid joke, but it has the R word in it. And I think we've used our uh, allotment. Well, Monus was like, I was called Jew Boy <laughs> when I was a kid. He's like, but there's no way they're gonna be like, I'm a major in Jew Boy films. Oh, which right. It's very funny. That's a great joke. Yeah, it's kind of uh, like person of color and color person. Like you're just saying, it's like I'm saying I'm a fan of the Patriots. Now a Patriot fan. Right. You know, it's all very silly. What, oh, what do you got, I got a Roop? great story. Okay. I don't know if I can tell it on here, though. Ah, it's too but dark. You'll love it. I can't well, wait. It's, it's in Orson Welles. Hold on, I want to hear that. But in Orson Welles' book, I guess, he told the story about the DP on Casablanca was like a Hungarian guy. Mm. And he has... Uh, I have this book. I haven't gotten there yet. He says, uh, he has, at one point, he has all the white actors on one side and all the black actors on the other side. And he goes, okay, we're going to get a shot with all the N-word actors. Oh. Except he says it, you know. And the director's like, whoa, 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 hey, it's uh, colored. You have to say colored. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he goes, okay, well, sorry. We got to get a shot with all the colored N words. <laughs> Is that amazing? Uh, that's hilarious. I mean, that's an insane story. Was that it's, it's real? in the book. Yeah, oh, it's a real story. Oh, that's gold. That but it's 1941. Gold. He's like, oh, geez, sorry. I don't even know. <laughs> So he just says colored N-words. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's an all-timer. That's amazing. I had to call Henry immediately. I'm like, I got one for you. That is, love these old that's the line stories. of the week right there. Colored N-words. Woo! <laughs> um, all right. So uh, this is a story from the 40s. We didn't write this. Yes, this is not yes. our story. This is not our ass. But he wasn't trying to be funny. No, no. That's, he was trying to be politically correct. Uh, that's he was like, oh, gold. excuse me. That is gold. All right. What happened? Uh, Rupert's not Mike, but we'll translate. <laughs> The more clinical term homosexual, on the other hand, has been used to pathologize and stigmatize same-sex desire. And that's from uh, LSE. I don't know what that is. So. Okay. L- uh, LSE. Yeah. LSU? LSD? College? <laughs> LSE? Yeah. Okay. Lazy, stupid, etards. All right. Well, anyway, so there's a story, and so there you go. Homosexual is bad. Gay is yeah. the thing. But uh, Monus is hilarious. Ruby's very funny, too. Yeah, I would do the joke, but it's got the R word in it. Um, and I think I've done enough of those. But any jizz. Nice. That's yeah. cute. Nice and easy. Hey, hey, folks. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by ExpressVPN. It's expensive to live nowadays. If there's a way I can save a buck or two, I'm going to do it. I've saved so much by cutting back on the number of of streaming services I have and just using ExpressVPN to get a little variety. Streaming services like Netflix actually have thousands more shows than you think. You don't just see them all because different shows are available in different countries. With ExpressVPN, just change your online location to another country and unlock unlock a ton of new shows. What a great idea. So if you're in Bolivia, pop us on your Netflix and now you're cooking. You see some American TV, the good stuff. All you horseshit weirdos with your Koreans and your Australians, check out the old brain on bread. We got some great entertainment out here. Right now I'm watching Mr. Bean. It's not on Netflix here, but ExpressVPN, I tap one button to change my country to the UK, refresh the page, and it shows up. I don't need to pay extra for Apple TV or Prime just to watch it. Wow, that's great. It's like you're fucking another woman of your TV. Some services even cost less in other countries. For instance, if you buy Netflix from Argentina, you'll only pay a fraction of the price. It's a no-brainer. So if you want to get way more shows, save way more money while you're at it, go to expressvpn.com slash Tuesdays. Don't forget to use our link so you can get three months free. Wow. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash Tuesdays. ExpressVPN.com slash Tuesdays to learn more. Great read. Woo! Tuesdays with Stories, also brought to you by Liquid IV. Hey. These sons of onions. Oh, I got a million of them. It's hard to remember to drink water. I mean, I, every day I'm like, well, forgot water. <laughs> water! So hard, in fact, that there's a whole 
side of TikTok where people are showing off their weird water concoctions where they mix in syrups and sugar so it'll taste good enough to drink. You know how much I love TikTok. I got my nose to the grindstone over there on TikTok. Oh, yeah. Get off water talk and get into Liquid IV. It's actually good for you and tastes delicious. Liquid IV is the number one powdered hydration brand in America, and it's now available sugar-free with awesome flavors like white peach, Mm. lemon lime, Ah. and green grape. You can mix it up every day of the week. I love this stuff. I have boxes and boxes. I have so many boxes, I asked them to please send it to my uncle's fire department. And supposedly they're going to. Hey. It hasn't arrived yet, but I believe it's on its way, I hope. If anyone knows hydration, it's firemen. They need it. They're alcoholics. They got the smoke inhalation and mostly the alcoholism. Mix it right with the hose. But they're a great guy, so they can shove. That's a good idea. You get a nice big mug, stick the hose in there, yeah. blast off. <laughs> yeah. Getting your daily dose of water has never been easier. Just mix one stick of liquid IV with 16 ounces of water and drink up. It's so difficult to drink water. It is. It's tough. It hydrates you two times faster than water alone and has three times the electrolytes of leading sports drinks. So even if you've been on a crazy bender, you can bounce back in time for work on Monday. Real people, real flavor, real hydrating. Now sugar-free. Grab your Liquid IV Hydration Multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at Costco or get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code TUESDAYS at checkout. That's 20% off anything you order when you use promo code TUESDAYS at liquidiv.com. Um, Tell you, where you been? What are you doing? Who are you blowing? Where are you jizzing? The mouse is caught. It's all good. Well, oh, so yeah. last Wednesday, I still feel guilt. Last Wednesday in New York, it was my last day in the city before heading to Providence. I got, um, I'm doing... Chris Millhouse's show, our pal Millhouse. The, 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 the winery. City winery. Good love room. Love the Millhouse. Good love, egg. You, love you, Mill. Mill Mouse. Though he took a photo of the three of us, and then he blacked out my face and wrote, your face here, I'm opening for Mark. I'm like, ah. hey, you cut me out of the photo. Yeah, you don't want to be the black guy. You're, you're black face. Yeah. Well, it's white. The ah, white face. Okay, white face. Well, that's bad, right. too, I think. Ah. Maybe not. Bob Dylan did white face. Really? Yeah, the 74 tour. He came back, he painted his face white. Oh, yeah. Why'd he do that? I'm not sure. Huh. It's well, eccentric. The Wayans brothers still get white chicks. Um, but anyway, so I had City Winery, which is a great room, great show. Love Millhouse. Yes, yes. And then I was shooting over there to your show, Good Eggs. Oh, yeah. It's the hottest show in town. New York Comedy Killer. Club. Sold out. You're on. Ruby, Vitor, all my buds. And I go, that'll be a fun night. That'll be good. I go out, I do a couple podcasts, I come home, and uh, I text our old pal Shane Gillis, old SG. And I, mm. You do this move, you're like, I fucking hate myself, I got a huge special coming out, I'm trying to blow this thing up, I'm having a kid, my father's gay, George is saying cut it, mm. can I do your podcast? And then you, you ask, and then you throw your phone across of the course, room, you smash course. it. It's the worst feeling ever. You hate asking favors, even if it's close friends. Yes, yes. And so then 30 seconds later, the phone starts ringing, which anytime a phone rings, I shit my pants. Well, this is a lot of roller coaster here. We got we got the throw the phone, then we got the ringing. There's a lot going on with this contraption. It's, it's vibrating. I have the AirPods. It's what's like, call from Shane Gillis. Oh, call wow. from Shane Gillis. How do you do that? I got none of that. Well, I have my Raycons. Oh, yes, Gaycon. Are hooked up. Which is the worst festival. So it's the iPhone, whatever. <laughs> so it says call. So I'm like, ah, geez, now I got to talk. I'm scared. Yeah. I answer. He goes, of course you can do the podcast. What's wrong with you? It's, uh, it's always weird. He's like, what are you talking about? Uh, and I'm like, well, I don't know. You think he's like, what's wrong with you? Of course, well, come on the podcast. You know what's wrong with us? You don't have to ask. I know it's we're a good fucking point. all crazy. He's crazy too. Get the hell out of here. That's true. So he says, come on the podcast, and then I get this. This is the worst. He's like, but we're recording for the next six months in Philadelphia. So you're like, now I got to go to Philadelphia. Okay. That's well, we're, we're going there in the 22nd. That's true. Then I do this. I'm like, oh, you're in Philadelphia. You should do the live pod. He's like, I think I come back that day. And I'm like, I thought you were there the whole month. <laughs> so it's like an Abbott Costello routine. <laughs> Who's on third? But anyway, so maybe we'll be a special guest August 22nd, Philadelphia. Umar Khan and Shane Gillis, the big two. Yes, yes, black and white. Shane is not guaranteed. Umar's guaranteed. He's already there. He made a flyer. That That's when you know a guy showed up, when he I makes the own, his own flyer. He's like, can I advertise this? I'm like, you'll be the first one who did. <laughs> Anyways. Please do. What date is that? August 22nd. Deuce, deuce. Bigelow. Rocking the deuce, deuce. So anyways, he goes, yeah, you can come with the pod. And then he goes, well, what are you doing tonight? And I go, well, I got two spots. I'm doing the Millhouse show. I'm doing the Norman show. And he goes, ah, damn. I'm at Grove 34. I was going to see if you wanted to come by and do a set. 
And I'm like, ah, I can't hang up. Then you're sitting there in your house. You have this thing. So you're like, all right, well, I got to go do city. It's five o'clock somewhere. It's five o'clock, three (laughs) hours till showtime. Yeah. And I'm going, all right, I'm going to get a lift to City Winery. Okay. That's going to be 40 bucks. Then I'll take a lift over to Good Eggs because I got to hustle to make it. Yeah. Appreciate the show. Love the show. Then I'll take a lift home. It's $100. I'll break even. Ah, I didn't think about that. And then you're like, Grove 34, three blocks from my house. It's Shane. I never get to see Shane. I never get to hang out with Shane. And it's, it's sold, sold out. out. I mean, packed out. Uno or Deuce? Just the one show. Okay, wow. Boy, this is an easy night. What do you do? 20, 25? Yeah, that's the other thing. He's like, you can do as much time as you want. Because ah. he's, he's working new. He's like, I got 20 minutes. You can do whatever you want on the show. Okay. So Also very flattering. This big comic is asking you to pop on. Yeah, I love the pop on. Well, this big comic also used to write us fan letters and blow us before not that long ago. All right. That's he was a good like, point. He's like, oh my God, Tuesdays with Stories. I love the show. Oh my God. <laughs> and that, now he's like uh, the king of comedy. Yeah, he'll be doing MSG before. Or Chappelle. Yeah, I think he probably he might be able to do it. Ah, I'd yeah. have to black out the top, maybe. But maybe. I think he could sell. We'll let the special. He's got a special coming out. Uh, what is this? The the Gillis Pod? Come on, <laughs> keep going. Good point. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, boy, I wish I could just go there. I could just walk over there, come back. Ah, well, I got the thing. And then you have that moment of like. Well, it's New York. I'm sure they could replace me. Sure. So I text Vitor first. And yeah. I said, seriously, say no. This is the second text I've spent that's three feet long. Yeah, like, yeah. Say no. If it's a problem, fuck me in the ass. Forget I said anything. Don't be afraid to say no. But could you possibly replace me? Because I'm getting offered this thing. Yeah. And he goes... Don't even worry about it. Yeah, you got to love the Veed. He's the best. And I'm like, okay, he's, are you sure? And he's like, I already texted our booker. You're all set. There you go. So I'm like, okay, uh, now I got Millhouse, so I'm nervous about because we're not as close. And he relies on you to sell tickets. He probably put your, your white face on a flyer. Yeah. So then I do, I do he's going to hear this, but I was like, Shane Gillis just offered me three grand to do Grove 34. <laughs> and he's like, well, you got to say yes to oh, that. Oh, okay, okay. I think he was annoyed. But sure, that's understandable. That being said, not you're never going to bring this up, and hopefully he never hears this, but a couple months ago, I was booked oh, that's on right. his show, Let's... and I was like, hey, I haven't gotten a confirmation. He was like, oh, I blew it. I wrote down the wrong date. So Even Steven. He, Look... And that was like 90 minutes out. Ah, what's good for the salad goose is good for the gander. So, and I'm not saying fuck him for that mistake. No. He knows, but I'm saying, well, you know, we've, we've I've been on the other side of this. Things happen. And uh, so I apologize if anyone came to those shows looking for me. But, so then you, I text Shane. I'm going, I'm in. He's yes. like, sweet. So then you walk three blocks, and it is packed. I mean, he's an event. Oh, yeah. There's a line around the block, I'm sure, of big, doughy white guys. People everywhere. And it's funny, because I had a funny riff up top, because I'm like, I do the I do Grove Thirty Four once a month, and they're like, "We sold out again." And I show up, and like, there's literally eighty more people at his show, uh, my show. How do you? The room is smaller than my dick. Everyone was standing room only. I mean, stuffed up. People were standing on stage with you like this. Wow. And uh, we go back there, and those guys are awesome. Rob and Derek, check out Grove Thirty Four in a story. Yes. I'm there on nine eleven. Never forget. Killer. They killer. got Cohiba cigars just lined up. They let you smoke indoors. You just smoke what? in there. I'm smoking cigars. They got a pile of Bud Lights for Shane. TVs, they have football highlights. They have NFL Network going. There's just football highlights. Wow, it's probably the only room in America that the green room is almost the same size as the showroom. Good point. It's a nice, meaty green room. Great green rooms. You go back there, he's got little Sasquatch on the show. I like that guy. He's cute, cute kid. And uh, it was just a good hang. And then Rob Rigo's hosting. Rigo, uh, Rigo Park. Yeah, and then Lily Michelle, you know her? Asian? Muslim. Ah. She got in some hot water for a joke at the stand. Oh, really? Yeah. Is she black, short black hair? No, I think long black hair. Who am I thinking of? She goes on the road with Shane. She's very she attractive. One-liner? Dark? I think. I don't know her stand-up that well, honestly. Did she write for SNL? I don't think so. Uh, I think I she, used think. To, she used to be a server at the old stand. What? Yeah, you'd know her. You think? Very hot. Very hot. Yeah. Lily. She goes Mich- in the road with Shane. All right, we'll, we'll pull her up on there up and, and flip that computer out if you name? can. 
No, I'm sure you got it right. I, I just I can't keep track of my Muslims. But anyway, she's hanging. Great hang. We're back there. We're laughing. We're talking football. I got Shane's like literally like dude thirty if you want. Wow. So I'm like okay. What a night. I go up. And this crowd is on fire. That is my my favorite room in the city. I'm it's not even a joking. Hot hot show. I think we might do a special for Sarah there. Ooh, that's I would a great shoot idea. there. Yeah. So, anyways, I go up riffing, kill it, and Rob is great because he's he's so funny and such a good guy. But you can shit on him too. I'm mm. like, Rob's lying. This is a, I never sell out, and it was funny because that's not her comedian. That's Lily Singh. Lily Singh. That's an Indian. Um, but um, anyways, the show is great. And Rob, every time I, I'm there once a month, and he gives me he's like, this guy's the best comedian. He's my favorite. I love him. And then Shane's there. So my intro is like, this guy's wife's pregnant. He's pretty good. Nah. You're going to like him. So that was fun. Good riffs. Yeah. Great crowd. Shane goes up. Shane kills. I'm sitting in the back smoking a, a, a fucking Cohiba. Oh, wow. Listening to Shane Gillis do comedy. I'm like, I made it. I got my feet up. Wow. He's, I'm, I'm laughing my ass off at his shit. I'm smoking. It's, it's the best time of my life. And you canceled two killer gigs to do a killer gig. So what a great spot to be in. Great spot to be in. And then afterwards, there was a roast battle with all these oh. young comics. I don't know. And Shane's like, let's hang out and watch the roast battle. Oh, there you go. So I'm like, okay, we're watching a roast battle. I'm smoking a bat. We're high fiving. Great night. Then you fi- I text Sarah. I'm like, you hungry? She's like, I'm starving. Get some food delivered. I walk home. I'm finishing my cigar on the walk home. Summer night. You feel the breeze on the Woo-wee. arms. You know I love the breeze on the arms. Love an arm breeze. Stroll back. I get back to the house. I got this much cigar left. I stomp it out. I see a mouse. I go inside, eat my <laughs> soup. Did all the great new bits. Got a quality set in. Yes. And now you love that feeling where you make a decision. You feel bad about it. You're like, am I an asshole? And then you go... That was the best decision I ever made in my life. Yes, there you go. You did it. So wow. I hope Millhouse and your book, I hope they're not upset. I'm sorry, but people cancel all the time. I never cancel. I canceled once. What are you going to do? Cancel culture. I agree. And uh, you did the right thing. And, and a, a set in New York's like a meal. Sure, you miss one, but you'll have another one. Yeah, there'll be another they, one. They and... come right back. There's one right behind the other, like a human centipede. And uh, that's, uh, that's a hell of a story. New York right now. August, the, the heat has kind of dissipating a little bit. I walked around the village last night. The wife's out of town. I made a cocktail. Mm. Don't tell anybody. I made a cocktail. I put it in a Starbucks, one of these. I'm sipping it, walking around, doing a phone call. I was like, all right, I call my mom. I got to call this guy. I got to do this. And I said, let me walk around. And I walked around at about 8 p.m. Every The village is magical, except for the hobos. Thank you. But... <laughs> You go deep enough, you go west enough, oh, every yeah. every restaurant is full, the people are pouring out of there, it's all these handsome, good-looking people, clinking glasses, laughing, and the tree-lined, and the sun is setting, and the brownstones, and the cobblestone, and the cobblestone throat, and you're just going, this is, it's like Europe. I, yes. feel, like I, I feel like I'm in gay Paris or, or Prague or something. It's the new Amsterdam. There it is. New Amsterdam, <laughs> bad movie, but uh, good good town. Yeah, great town. So that was a great night, and I had a I had a similar thing with uh, not to bring it back to the Gill Net, but wow, we love Gills. What are you gonna do? I asked to do his pod a while back, and he was <laughs> like, "Yeah, sure, come on," because he asked me, and I couldn't do it. So I said, "Oh, I'd like to get on that." So he asked me, I can ask him because sure. I'm not a big asker. And then I he said, "Yeah, yeah, come on over." And I was so guilty for asking, I totally ate, I choked on the pod. Ah, I, I played it, and all the comments were like, what's up with Norman? He's not talking. Because <laughs> I, I was just like, I feel so weird asking. Yeah. And it, it totally, I couldn't couldn't be funny. Yeah, it's awkward. I've, I've had a podcast or two where I just felt uncomfortable. Yes. But you, you, it's, it's this weird thing, and you're like, all right, something will come. Yeah. I got nothing. We talk about it. It's like people don't realize when you do a podcast, it's like it's not like we prepared anything. No. And sometimes, you know, sometimes they don't laugh. <laughs> sometimes and well, you feel it in the live ones where you're like, Oh, oh, wait a minute. This is this is you gotta go. You gotta think. You gotta be quick. Bring it. Move, baby. Yeah, I said that in the last live episode. When you're here, you're just like, I think they're interested in this. Yeah. I think they're laughing at home. But yeah, when you're live in, in person, people are just like this. <laughs> you're like, ah, oh, Jesus. And, and you can't blame them, but uh, boy, you got to kick it into high gear, Fatty. Yeah, it's uh, it's tricky. Because the thing with doing a big pod, you're like, if I kill, I'll get all these fans. Right. But if, like, if I bomb, I lose all these people forever. Yeah, There's yeah. 300,000 people that are like, that guy sucks. So true, so yeah. true. But then I know friends who will do pods and they're like, 
I didn't feel like doing it, and I just sat there, and I'm like, and they still have tons of fans, and I mean, huge comment. I can name, I won't name them, but I'm like, I've seen you on pod just eat shit, not say anything, sit there kind of angrily, and I'm like, how do you still have fans? But they they just like them. Well, some people are podcast people, and some people are clip people, and some yeah. people are special people, and some people are uh, late night people. There's different kinds of yeah. brands, I think. I guess so. I guess so. But let, let me throw this in your uh, dick hole and see if it's infected. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to Europe, and uh, you got to get a you got to get a physical. You know, they have all these dumb rules. Physical. Yeah, physical. Let's get. Physical. Thank you. Physical. Oh, Newton John, huh? Oh, oh, my God. I love both versions of her in Greece. Yeah, the whore and the nerd. <laughs> I'm with you. Maybe that's the name for the movie, the whore and the nerd. Or the nerd <laughs> in the morning. Um, so uh, I could. I was so busy. They, they set me up with all these pods and phoners and all these bullshits. Plus, I got to do our pod, drunk and road and travel. So they go, how about this? We'll, tell, we'll get the lady to come to your house. And I was like, oh, wow. It's Which like a, lady is this again? This is like a nurse. Oh, the physical. Sorry. The physical. I, I got my, my brain's all over here. So I'm like, can you do that? And they're like, yeah, yeah. So now I'm texting with the lady. And you know, the whole time you're like, is she hot? Is this a porno? Is this going to work out? What's she going to be in my home? Your lady or the nurse lady? The nurse lady. I see. She was a lady. And uh, they're like, okay, we worked it out. She's coming at, all she could do is 9 a.m. So you're like, God, 9 a.m. But these doctors, they're up at, they're like farmers. Right. Did she have a little leather bag? She had a bag. Oh, it wasn't leather. Yeah. She had a bag, but uh, so we're texting. I'm like, I'm so sorry about all this. I'm so busy. She's like, my office is 10, 10 seconds away. It's all good. I was like, oh, great. So she texts me the night before. She goes, I can do 8.30 if you want to do 8.30. And I said, I was going to hope you would do 9.30. And she was oh. like, all right, I'll see you at 9.30. I was like, yeah. Okay. So I wake up at 9. Uh, she texts at 9.20. I'll be there in 10 minutes. I said, that's what 9.30 is. I go down and get her. And I was like, oh, what's she going to look like? Old Jamaican bro. Oh. Just like out of the movies. Uh, how you doing, man? Oh, Irie. Here we are. I got my bag. Oh, hey. And uh, you got any uh, roti? All this shit. And big glasses, big braids, and uh, it was so great being with a Jamaican lady hmm. because they don't give a shit about anything. Right. Everybody, you know, like, at first I'm like, oh, there's a lady in my house, I should make her feel like, comfortable because, you know, she's in my house. Like, women are scared of men, and what are men going to do? We're toxic. So I was like, you cool coming upstairs? We could do it in a park bench. She was like, what? Let's go. What are we doing? Uh, and I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> all right. So we go upstairs, and uh, I go, I have a cat. Are you nervous about cats? She's like, I eat cat. What are you talking about? I'm going to fuck about cats. I was like, oh, yeah, right. So I open the door, and she's uh, I was like, whatever you want. I let her go in, you know, and I'm like, she's like, hurry up. What are you doing? And it was so nice having a woman who was just like, yeah, I don't give a shit. Let's go. We knocked it out. The whole thing took 15 minutes. And she left. So what did she, did she grab your balls and make you cough? Or is there that's is it heart rate or what? That's what I was doing. She did the pulse. She did the shh, 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 Blood pressure. Shh. Thank you. That scares me. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't great. And then uh, it's so nervous having her in my house, and I think it went up. But whatever. Yeah, it's white coat syndrome. Ah. Black lady syndrome. Yes, yes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, she was a... Jerk chicken? Okay. So she put the, uh, she has a scale. She just pulls out a scale, puts it on the floor. She weighed me and she goes, okay, how much, how tall? And then that was it. Wow. That's fascinating. Cause so I, I guess it's like the insurance company for the tour. Cause that's it's like a big it. thing. Cause I remember when we did, I did the Netflix half hour. I had to go to Dr. That Vinny doctor Boombox. That everyone goes to. His name's Louis. Dr. Louis Love. Something. Louis Body. It might be Louis Katz, actually. Oh, I think his name is Louis Katz. He's like a sense. famous TV guy doctor. Oh, Dr. Katz. <laughs> he's like, does you go, you have to do a physical, but it's like all bullshit. He's just like, yeah, yeah, you're good. Oh, okay. He's like, what kind of purse, what kind of health would you have to be in before you're like, you can't have a Netflix special? Yeah, good point. Like you know Ralphie I mean? May had one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's a good point. Also, the the most awkward part was she was like, "Do you have? Do you take any drugs?" And I was like, "All I take is finasteride." What the hell's that? That's a it's, it's a knockoff Propecia ah. for the for the the pubes. Ah. Yeah, Jeez. and uh, she was like, "Okay, great. What's the doctor's name?" And I said, "Doctor Steve." That's who I get. Oh, you know, right. Doctor Steve. I love Doctor Steve. And she was like, 
what the fuck's a Dr. Steve? Like, I need a last name. And I was like, I don't think he has one. It's like Madonna. And she was like, wait, what? You got a doctor? So now she's like, who is this drug dealer you're getting shit from? So now, like, the jig is up. No offense, black lady. And uh, she's like, I need a last name. I was like, I've known this guy 15 years. I've never heard of his last name. It's Cher, you know? And she was like, I can't leave here without a last name. I need to know where you're getting these drugs. So I made one up. <laughs> Steve Martin. <laughs> I, I said, uh, with Buscemi, and we moved on. <laughs> Talk to Van Nostrand. Yeah. So wow. that was a weird little hiccup. But other than that, we're good. Well, I'm glad you got the physical. I'm glad you got the uh, approval. Now, can I ask you, Rupert, how long have we been recording? Because I don't know. We, do I have time to tell a story? Oh, yeah. What time we got? Oh, oh, okay. okay oh, Jesus. Okay. I thought this. I thought we were at like an hour 30. I thought so, too. I thought we were flying. Oh, Christ. I'm like the cross. <laughs> well, should I get into some Los Angeles stuff? Yes, please. I please. Got, I got the some L.A. City of Angels. La La Land. I was out in town. L.A. for two fucking weeks. And uh, late show and all. Th- oh, two yeah. Weeks. Oh, my God. Wow. Was I, it two weeks? It was 12 days. Well, I was gone for 12 days. I was in, I was in L.A. for four days. Sorry. Oh, okay. I was in uh, Irvine for... Three and then oh. uh, what do you call it? San Jose for three. And, Irvine, uh, good, good alum. Uh, Will Farrell from Irvine and uh, Rage Against the Machine. Is that right? Yeah, it kind of takes him down a peg <laughs> with really that anti establishment horse shit. That's really funny. They said they're just like from like extremely affluent town. But he's Hispanic, so he said, I felt, uh, you know, ostracized. I'm like, have you been to California? It's pretty Hispanic. Yeah. But, wow. Della Rocha. What are you going to do? Fun band. Bado, da, da, do, da, da, do. Scabba, da, ba, do. Balls on parade. Um, all right, so I went out to L.A. This is a month and a half ago, but there's some, there's some good stuff in here. Please. So uh, I, I, I think LA. I mentioned this. I finally feel it in in L.A. Like I yes. got, I'm very in at the uh, improv. I, gotta, I love them. They're so nice. Love the improv. Got some stuff at the store, a little Laugh Factory business. We got to get your name on that wall. At the store, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. What are you going to do? They that, just put a bunch up. That Mitch Hedberg joke doesn't work anymore. I think I saw you at the store. Because it could be the comedy store. Oh, uh, yeah. Interesting. That's a little bit of a non sequitur. Doesn't work anymore also because he's dead. Ah. But, he died? Yeah, passed away. Yikes. Anyway, Should so I'm out, the physical. I'm out in L.A., and then one of the nights, I got, uh, I'm there. I have a late spot at... The Laugh Factory. Mm. They asked me to do uh, this. Uh, a guy uh, asked me to do the show, and I go, "Great, I'm in." And then the improv is like, "Hey, you want to do the late show on Wednesday?" And I go, "Sure, I'll double up." They're right down the street from each other. Sunset Bull. And then Millhouse, Chris Millhouse, the aforementioned Chris Millhouse, he goes, "Hey, I got a show at the store that night ah. in the uh, the main room, which oh. I've never performed at." Oh, the main room's magic. It's beautiful. So I go, "Ugh." Uh, okay, I'll figure it out. Because all three clubs are a mile away. Yeah, totally. Are you it's, driving? I got. Uh, I have a car, but I'm staying across the street. So I'm like, I don't oh. want to take my car out because I'm staying across the street in the store. The zig. So it's one of these, and you know how this goes. You're the king of this. So now I just I'm like dreading because I have three late spots, all 10 p.m. show, 10 p.m. show, 10 p.m. show. Yeah, yeah. So as it gets closer, you're like, how the fuck am I gonna pull this off? Yeah. And then the night before. They asked me to do the belly room. They're like, do you want to headline the belly room at 8? So, and you can just book whoever you want. Okay. So I go, great, I'll take it. So I get uh, Chris Walsh, who's doing stand-up again. Oh. He's fucking hilarious. Nice. And um, I got Chris Walsh. I got my friend Lindsay Adams mm. and Allie Makovsky. Ah, the Makovsky. She's a fun egg. And I think, oh, and Milhouse. Milhouse oh. is like, hey, maybe I'll jump on your show. I said, I'm, I'm happy to have you. Sure. So we had Milhouse, Makovsky, Lindsay, and Chris Walsh. That's a hell of a show. Great show. A lot of whites. So now you have the thing where you're like, now I'm at the belly room, which is at the comedy store upstairs. I'm doing my own headlining show. And then I'm on the late show in the main room. So now you wish you didn't have the improv uh, and laugh factory because you're like, well, I, I could st- just do my show, stay here, and hang out. And then Fahim's on the show, Satino's on the show. So it's it's a fucking hang. Yeah. And I'm like, God, these other shows. But you're happy to have them. So we do the belly room. Great show. A bunch of Tuesdays came out. That room is great, mm. packed. Yeah. Um, great set. And so now I'm like, okay. I got to get to work. So I finagle all my times. So like, can I move this here? Can I do this there? What time is this? I, I text Milhouse. I'm like, so I can close the main room. That way I'll end at the store. 
and I'm standing across the street. Okay. So I'm doing the improv first. So I get Lindsay. Wow. He's like, I'll drive you over there. Saves me a lift. She gives me a lift over to the improv, jump on there. I'm like, can I move earlier? Because I got to get to the Laugh Factory. I'm doing all three. They're like back to back to back. Well, that's scary just because you don't want to be the diva guy, the Dane Cook. Can I go up early and leave all you schmucks in the dust? Exactly. And it's like, I'm visiting, so you're afraid it's going to be like this, this guy New Yorking it, which also, no one really does this in L.A. I know. Everyone's like, wow, the New York making L.A. like New York. Yeah, yeah. So... Belly Room was great. I go to the improv, and it's Chad and JT. You know those guys. Oh, good, good queefs. Love those guys. Lunch. And I'm like, maybe, if not, no big deal, but can I possibly go? Or they go, yeah, no problem, of course. Oh, They're just laid back. Stoners. Jump on that show. Great show. Great set. Finish there. Lindsay's like, hey, Laugh Factory's on the way home. She lives in the valley. She's like, I'll take you to the Laugh Factory. I go, oh, my God, you're saving my life. This gal's a saint. Oh, I'll blow her someday. I go, okay, great. We jump in the car. She shoots me up the street. Laugh Factory, great to see you. I love you. Goodbye. Go into the Laugh Factory. I'm like, I'll just knock this out, and then I'll jog up to the comedy store. It's right up the street. Mm. No problem. Wow, this is unreal. Get in there. Now, the Laugh Factory, this show had started early, was going a little... Late, I think, running behind. You don't so say. You're just like, okay, it's running behind. So it was like, it's one more than you. And this guy's been on for 10. So I'm like, shit. So it's like basically two. He has to finish his set. Yeah. Plus another guy. Yeah. Then the length of my set. Yeah, that's a good half hour 35. And the time is ticking away. Yeah. I got to close. That, and belly. if I miss my spot, it's over. Not the belly room, the main room. Oh, what happened to the belly? You did that already. The belly I already did. Okay, I got it. Belly's got it, got it. done. Now I'm at the tits. So <laughs> I'm sitting there, and this comic just goes on for a while. Oh. And it's going and going, and it's a light crowd, and they are a bit hostile. Mm. And so is he, and it's like sprinkled, and it's a tough-looking crowd. There's a guy with face tattoos oh, who was like boy. sitting like this. And I was like, oh, God, that's scary. Well, where's Michael Richards when you need him to yell at these people? <laughs> so, he finishes his set, then the next guy goes on, and now I'm like freaking out, because I'm like, I'm going to miss my spot in the main room, yes. never done the main room, excited to be there, and like I said, you got Santino's over there, Fahim's, everyone's over there. The good news is, they want to go early, they want to go home, Santino's married, Fahim's uh, uh, brown, and you're probably in contact with the house, Yes, with the mill. I'm texting mill house, and he's like, you're okay, whatever, but he's also... Running the show, he's on the show, he's hanging out, he doesn't want to hear from me. Mm. He's like, Get, leave me alone, just right. come when you come. So finally, I go on and I'm like, hey, I'm sorry, I'm like way behind, can I do like eight minutes? And they're like, yeah, yeah, do whatever you want, because we got extra people. I go up and eat ah. shit. They fucking hated me. Yeah. And now you're just like, God, I suck. Well. And, and they're just looking at me like this, it's late in the night and you're like this. I mean, I'm bombing. Yeah. And I haven't had a set like that, like a real bag of cheese. Uh. And you're going, God, I wish I was just at the store right now. <laughs> I know. I drove here for this. I'm I waited. Great, I'm grateful for the spot. Then I come off, and you know Luke Null? No, oh, good Null. He's Love a, Luke Null. Sweet guy. He's getting ready to go on. He has his acoustic guitar. Oh, he's a goner. And he's walking up, and you almost want to stay and be like, Luke, my guy, I gave yeah. him a hug. I love the guy. He's going to stand up, stood out, and bang a guy on the head with it. <laughs> I'm like, I can't believe it. I mean, that looks like, uh, I don't even know what it looks like. Down and out in East L.A. or whatever. <laughs> it's a tough gang. And uh, he's walking up to his guitar, and I'm like, I got to get out of here. Yeah. So now I order a lift, which, you know, the store is... 10 minute walk. Yeah. I mean, it's a little kooky out there in Hollywood these days. Sure, Holly weird. And I was kind of like, maybe I'll jog, but I was like, let me just get a car. It'll take me one minute. Lift pulls up. It's, it says it'll be here in one minute. I'm like, great. I walk out. The lift is doing a U turn on the Hollywood Boulevard or Sunset Boulevard there. Does a U turn and bang! Hits the car. What? The valet car. Oh. Because it's all valet there. So it's the valet guys pulling a car in. The lift does a U-turn, smush, they just smash into each other. Wow, well, that's on the driver, because uh, the lift guy, because that's an illegal U. He's doing a U-turn, oh. and I'm like, I got five minutes till spot time. I'm like, I, I got to go, so I, I just get in the car. I'm like, it wasn't too bad, so I just jump in the car. Now I get in the back of the car, I'm like this, while he's surveying the damage. Yeah. And the guy's like, the valet guy, doesn't give, it's not his car, but he's like, yeah, you hit me and he's like you can't be you can't be here what are you doing here you gotta be oh. careful you motherfucker and he's screaming at him I, by the way I, I can't really understand he had a very thick accent sure. whatever he was 
And the guy's like, the valley guy's like, uh, you hit me. Yeah. And he's like, well, this is crazy. I don't know fucking. And he's yelling. And I'm just like, hey, I got to get to the oh, store here. Step on it. So what, do you get a new lift or? No, I just wait. And I'm like, I think it'll be OK. I'm texting Milhouse. Now Milhouse is like, we're a little behind. You're OK. All right. That's a good feeling. Lift driver gets in the car finally after five minutes. And he's like, these motherfuckers, this fucking city, this piece of shit, trash city. And I'm in the back going, I know you can't trust anybody. It's wild. Yeah. And uh, he's listening. as I'm, we get to the store, I get out. And he's still like, these motherfuckers, yeah. oh, fuck you. And I'm like, I know it's crazy. Get in. I bump into Santino and Fahim, and I'm like, oh, my God. And they're like, you got time. You're good. I love that. And they are like, you're next. But uh, great to see those guys. Love those guys. Go in. Do the main room. Never done it before. That curtain opens. It's like showbiz. I mean, they were on fire. It was the end of the night. I'm, I'm last on a big show, so I'm like, this isn't going to be great. Rock and roll. Fucking killed. And you know what? You forget about L.A. That's great. It's like New York. In L.A. and New York, they're like, people that live there love the arts. That's why they're there, mm. I, a lot of them. Sure. So in L.A., more than most cities, they're like, what's your name? I want to write down oh, your name. I want to watch you. You have specials. I got to see you. Don't right. you find that? Like, a lot of times, if you do the guest spot somewhere in St. Louis, I yeah. feel like you get less. That's a good point. No, I think you're right. I think you're right. They want to follow you and learn more about you and, and, uh, and see your work. I could be wrong. I just feel like in L.A., people tend to be into the art. That's why they live there. They're near movies and showbiz and glitz and glamour. Sure. So they're like, I, I, I want to follow you. Yeah, yeah, that is interesting. Also, there's so much bad art there because everyone does move there. So when they see a good guy, they go, whoa, this, this is different. Right. And if, they, if they go to the store, they're probably regulars maybe. But anyways, that was a great night. Hey, folks, Tuesday Stories brought to you by Electric E-Bike. Woo, do I love that e-bike, baby. They sent us one. That thing moves. It, it runs like a Kenyan. I love that electric e-bike. Summer might be winding down, but I am keeping the good times rolling with my electric e-bike. Zipping around town on my e-bike is, is a blast. I feel like a cute kid again. I love this thing. I used to have a gas-powered hog. That thing broke down. It was a two-stroke. I need more strokes. Stroke my ass. I love this e-bike. And when you're a comic, you're doing spots all over Manhattan. I take it over the Brooklyn Bridge. I love this thing. It's the best thing for you. Parking's a cunt in this town. Not with an electric e-bike. It's, it's compact. It's well-made. It's sturdy. And it moves. Oh, yeah. It's got that battery pack, too. It never runs out. Most popular e-bike in the industry and starts at only $99.99. Wait, $9.99. Huh. They're foldable for easy storage and ship for free, fully assembled. Electric e-bikes come with a powerful removable battery, a bright LCD display, seven-speed gearing, and five levels of pedal assist to power your ride. How about that? Pedal assist. Wow. Get financing for as low as 73 a month so you can get started on your adventures without breaking the bank. Make every day feel like an endless summer vacation with an XP 3.0 from Electric. Visit electricebikes.com to learn more and explore the epic models Electric has to offer. That's L E C T R I C E bikes.com. Check it out. I love this thing. Very happy with it. Folks, I messed up. Huh? I put some food in my mouth. Oh. Tuesdays with stories. And speaking of food. There you go. Tuesdays with stories is brought to you by Hello Fresh. Hello. That's what I'm eating right now. Hello. Run by fruiting. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm eating food right now. It's all from Hello Fresh. They just sent us a huge box, and I am pumped. Mm. We all love baking grandma's famous chicken pot pie from scratch, but we don't have that kind of time. When your schedule is crazy and you can't afford to be standing in line in the grocery store or crying over chopping onions one by one, it's time to get far fre farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients mm. sent right to your doorstep with Hello Fresh. Hello Fresh makes home cooking fun, easy, and affordable. It's no wonder they're America's number one meal kit. Mm -hmm. What's my favorite meal? Chicken parm, salad, hot dogs. Burger. You name it. Yes. They'll send it. Yes, you got that right. They also have some great uh, smoothies they send over, and they're very tasty and uh, good for you. I had the smoothies. I love all foods. I, or any food you send me, I'm eating. And I don't even need to order it. Just send me whatever you think I should eat. That's what I'll eat. Yes. You, you know eat me. Anything. 
With 40 chef-crafted recipes to choose from every week, there's always something new to try. If you have a family who is constantly raiding the cupboards and eating out your house oh. at home, whew, don't panic. Oh, boy. HelloFresh can help with that, too. Shop the HelloFresh market, market, market Norman, <laughs> add snacks and sides to your weekly order to keep everyone satisfied. I'm not kidding. They sent us a huge box. It rules. It was so much food, and I had to go. I, I gave it to uh, Ronan and uh, oh. his chick, and they loved it, too. I'm, I'm swimming in thank yous. Look at that. We're eating HelloFresh. They're eating HelloFresh. It's just part of my diet now. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 Tuesdays and use code 50 Tuesdays for 50% off plus free shipping. That's insane. That's a deal. Half off. That's HelloFresh.com slash 50 Tuesdays. That's five zero Tuesdays, and use code fifty Tuesdays for fifty percent off and free shipping. Mm. And then uh, the next night, the Sklar brothers, who I love, oh hilarious duo. They're like, come to our show. I think you've probably done the show. Tag it. You know that show? Yes, yes. Great show. You do your new stuff. They give you tags. I got eight good tags out of that show. They're great. It's, it's impressive how fast they can write jokes. They got a good Jew comedy mind. They really do. I do that show. That's great. Then afterwards, I'm like, it's my last night in L.A. I got an early flight. And I go, all right, well, that was great. I'm staying across the street at Hotel Ziggy. Great hotel. You pulled it off. And I see Santino's on stage. I watch him for a minute, but I'm like, well, it's getting late. It's 10 o'clock. I got an early flight. I've hung out with him already. Fahim was here. I don't know where he went. I'm going back to the hotel. Get some get some sack time. Sure. Cross the street. Scary. Sunset Boulevard. Oh. You know, his cars are just ripping through. It's Frogger. Get all the way back to my room. Get in the room. Put the feet up. Great trip. Oh, God. I look. I'm like, who the fuck is this asshole? It's Fahim. Ah. And I go, ah, what's going on? Did I lose my wallet? I go, hey, what's up, buddy? He goes, what'd you leave? Uh Uh-huh. And I go, yeah, well, I got an early flight. He's like, are you kidding? He's like, I never see it. You're in town. It's 10 o'clock. Whoa. And I go, well, you know, it's early. And he's like, are you serious? Oh, geez. I'm over here. She gave it to you. Are you serious? He's like, I'm over here. What are you doing? Come over. Come hang. What are, what are we doing? And I was like, all right. Now, get you know me. It's like, once you're home, doesn't it feel like that's when you get hit by a car or, uh, like, or a mug or right. shot? Because you're like, I was home. It feels like those old stories. Yes. I was home, and I went back out. You went back out, and that's when it all got fucked. So you're like, all right, I'll go back out. Good I go back man. over there, run over there, bump it in for him. He's like, let's go have a cigar. And I was like, what? He goes, Burr leaves a humidor in the back. Oh, my I go, you got to be kidding me. So we go through the kitchen. You feel like you're in showbiz. He runs the place. He's like a, a sure. regular, of course. So we go there. There's a little humidor. He's got all these cigars in there that Burr just has there. So when he's there. Yeah. So we go into the little back patio area. We sit. We have a couple cigars. I met Polly Shore for the first oh. time. Some woman was who's a comic who's big, I guess. I don't know her name. She mm. was a door person there. She was visiting. Okay. We have a cigar. We talk shop. We talk comedy. Under the stars. I, I, I might move here, for wow. God's sake. So it was worth it. All worth it. I appreciate it. It's one of those great calls you get. Good call. You've had two good calls on this pod. That's right. Call. Good, good call calls. In. So hang out. And if you don't know Fahim, you should. You're doing comedy wrong. This guy, one of the best. Oh, Fahim's hilarious and a great, a normal guy. You know, some comics are like, this guy's a little bonkos. This guy's off. Yes. He's just a regular, level-headed brown. Mm-hmm. Good egg, big fan, and check out his stuff. He's got a couple specials out there, and he's a beast. Yeah, we really uh, connected on a lot of stuff. Great guy. So it was one of those ones you're like, because if I was there, I would just be like, well, I guess Mark left. <laughs> right, Damn! Right, like right, he's exactly. like he he did the call. Like, come on, what are you doing? I would do the same thing. Like, ah, I missed that guy. That was that was it. Yeah. So it, it was good because it, it, when you're out of, in a different town, one moment of no one being around that you yeah. know, you're like, let me get out of here. Of course, it's like you want to have like it's almost like having a sponsor. Like right, you have the Sklar Brothers, right. or you have Santino or Fahim, and then you're just by yourself in the hallway. You're just waiting for someone to be like, who the fuck are you? Yeah, exactly. Beat it. Exactly. Beat it. So as soon as I'm by myself, I'm like, ah! Yeah, yeah, but, I get uh, it. So that was great. And uh, Last, last I time know. I saw Fahim, he had, a, he had a, a video go viral, a clip go viral with the the, like, the right wing 
circuit picked it up, and it was hilarious. Oh, jeez. He was all nervous about it, but it was about how uh, you know, white women are always like, oh, mushrooms, you know, they have a feeling, and crystals are alive, and they have these roots, and then he's like, uh, but... Baby, that's a clump of cells. It was a it was a great bit, right. but uh, he got he got shit on that one. He's amazing. So that was great. And I have one more thing. If you're interested, ah, uh, yeah. How we doing, uh, Rupee? Uh, you got like five minutes. Oh, great. okay. Perfect. Well, I'll shove this one. Unless Please. you got something, you got more. Uh, I just uh, went. I just want to say thanks to Milwaukee. Marcus Monroe opened, killed it. We did the Milwaukee theater. My theater tour started, and I am up there with nothing. Oh boy. It's a weird feeling where it's bittersweet. The special's out. People seem to be liking it, but they've seen it. Right. So they come to the theater. We got to go see this guy. And I got about 22 minutes of good new, and the rest is the horse shit. You, me, and Shane are all in the exact same position. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. It but is. I also do feel like a real working comic. I'm like, I'm out here. You guys paid a hard ticket, and I'm trying to entertain you. Yeah, that's the hard thing about success. Yes. Is people are like, we saw this already. I know, I know. And it makes you think, I should have planned ahead. I should have had a hot 30 ready before I put the thing out. Well, I remember um, Louis saying that to us. He's like, I'm jealous of you guys. And you get annoyed because he's like, I'm yeah. jealous of you guys. This is like a while ago. He's like, you're performing. He's like, I miss performing for people that don't know who I am. I he's like, it's like, like, enjoy it. Yeah. At the time, you're like, I'm making $1,200 a week. <laughs> Stop it. Exactly. <laughs> like, I mean, and that's before all that stuff. Sure. And still... Now that people are coming to see us, you're still like, no, this is better. Yeah. It is yeah, stressful. This is way better. Leaving with money is nice. Yes, very nice. But I don't want to let these people down either because you don't want them to go, oh, we saw them live and, you know, eh, we'll, we'll stick with the YouTube. Of course, it's very hard. But, yeah, I was talking to Shane. We're all in the same spot. Yeah. And uh, they like us, luckily. So you can kind of get by. They'll meet you halfway on an idea that it isn't really finished. Yeah. So that's something. But you feel guilty. Yes, that is nice to have real comedy fans that are excited to see, like, oh, it's in progress. Yeah, yeah. But, but I, And I remember seeing a couple pros back in the day, like, oh, he's kind of, I saw Bill Burr once, and it was half good, half new, and I, I thought it was fun. Yeah. So come see us. Yeah. It's going to be funny. So thank you, Milwaukee and Des Moines. Love Des Moines. Great town. Yeah, Des Moines is fun. Underrated. Milwaukee's great too. Yeah, it was good. I've never seen the summer too. It's like, whoa, it's like seeing a woman with makeup on. You're like, hey, how about that? <laughs> Cleans up nice. But in the winter, you're like, Jesus Christ, moo moo. Milwaukee. Um, uh, sorry, hit what, it. What's this episode come out, by the way? I have, we have I no idea. Next Tuesday, week. Next week. Yeah, yeah, my special comes out Friday for oh, God's sakes, August 18th. Put it in the planner. I'll plug that. But uh, real quick, then I went off to, uh, what's it called? San Jose. San Woo! Jose. Ooh. With Monus, who was great, he was out of town when I was in LA, so it was good to meet up with him. But let me, let me, what do you, how you feel about this? So, I don't know if you did, you've probably done the San Jose Improv. Oh yeah, many times. I always say they put the crypt in crypto, but they probably put you in the same hotel. Did you stay at that really nice hotel? I forget what it's called. Huge lobby. Yeah. Bar yes. Thing. Yes. There's this huge. There's a bar in the middle. It's a big lobby with chairs. No real tables. And you sit there in the afternoon. I'm waiting for Luke to come down. So I'm sitting there with my feet up. And then here he comes. Okay, great. Let's go get lunch. So then it's time for the show. I'm going to meet him back there again. So I sit in the chair in the lobby. Mm. And a guy comes over and goes, uh, can I help you? Oh, boy. And I go, nah, I'm just waiting for my buddy. And he goes, yeah, yeah, this is a restaurant. Oh. I go, restaurant? I thought it was the lobby. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a guest. Yeah. And he goes, well, you can be a guest, but you got to order something. You can't just what? be sitting here. I thought it was a lobby, too. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, he's going to be right down. I'm just going to be here for one minute. And he goes, you got to wait out there. Whoa. With this, I came with this attitude. He's like, because this is a restaurant. He kept saying, this is a restaurant. You can wait right there. Wow. And I went, and by the way, it's a chair. What are these like chairs that has is like yes, this? The yes. Butt, like you're sitting like this. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, what kind of restaurant has chairs like this? Yeah, what, good you, point. you hold your plate? <laughs> right. So I go, okay. So I got to climb out of this fucking seat. And uh, Luke comes right down 30 seconds later, and I'm like, this guy just told me this is a restaurant. Yeah. And there's no signage. It doesn't say, welcome to fucking buttheads or whatever. <laughs> yeah, or Beavises. And there's no tables, and there's also nobody in there. It's 4, oh, 5, oh, whatever. No, now it's like 7 p.m. There's nobody in there. Yeah, it's where's my fucking menu then if it's a restaurant? Exactly. It's like this huge space, so I go, all right. So he's like, and Luke is like, I don't care for that. Luke's crazy. Yeah. So am I. So we're both like, fuck this guy. I love when he says that because I'm like, all right, now we're on to something. Yeah. 
So then we come back after the show, only one show, and I go, all right, let's hang. Uh, we'll sit here Uh-oh. in the, the restaurant. Careful. It's a, it's a dining establishment. So we sit down. Now it's about 1030. We're just chatting. The guy goes, uh, what do you guys need? And I go, I'll just have a, you have tea? You have chamomile tea? And the guy goes, no, we don't have tea. <laughs> and I go, okay. He goes, all we have is real drinks. And Whoa, go, real drinks. The most popular drink in the world, by the way. Yes, sir. And then also, so it's still like, there's like 10 people there. It's still mostly okay. empty. And I'm like, all right, well, do you want to drink? And he's like, I don't want to drink. And I go, well, can we just hang here? And he's like, this is a restaurant. Uh, <laughs> Double down. Guy's, same guy. This guy's AI. And so we're just sitting there like, all right. Well, we're guests here. It's totally empty. And again, there's not, I, it's hard to paint the picture. Yeah. There's no entrance. It's not, it's no. the same as the lobby. Yeah, there's no hostess, no nothing. It's just sunken. It's like one right, step down. Right, right. So we're sitting there like this. All right. Well, I don't want to, f- it's a restaurant. It's Thursday at 10.30 p.m. Nobody's in the fucking place. We yeah. can't sit in these seats. So we move just outside. Uh-huh. We go one step up and sit. And I'm like, just fuming. I hate this guy. And I'm like, what, what, what is with this guy? So now we're sitting like with our backs to the restaurant. Yes. And I'm comfy chairs, just talking like this next to each other. And I look out of the corner of my eye. I see a family. Guess what I see? Mick Jagger. No. All right. I don't know. A family? A family. What do you think they have? A uh, baby. No. A tea kettle. Oh. They got a little tea kettle and little cups. And I do this the hell and i go look do me a favor look over there tell me what's in front of that family over there and and he looks and he goes uh, he's a great friend he's like what is this what yeah. the christ and i go is that a tea kettle or am i crazy so then i'm like the psychopath i walk over there i go pardon me I, i'm like <laughs> i'm like jerry with the the pie yes yes i go i can't help it. do you guys have tea and the guy you could tell the guy's like doesn't want anything to do with this oh. he's like uh it's Tea, yes. Oh, that motherfucker like, got a home tea. So I'm like, you got tea. You got a you got a, a whole canister here of tea, a pot. And he's like, yeah, 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 we got tea. Uh-oh. And so I go back over. I go, he's got tea. They have tea. What yeah. the fuck is this? Uh-huh. And Luke goes, oh, I'm going to say something. I got to say something. All right. So Luke goes over like a manager and an umpire. And, I, I, and I'm like sitting like this going, oh, my God. He's a Karen. And he goes, uh, hey, what, what is this? They have tea right here. And the family's like, they don't want to be uh. part of this. And the guy goes, well, we, we have tea, but it's at the other restaurant. There's a breakfast oh. restaurant. He goes, what the hell is this? He goes, we could go get it, but it'll take like 10 minutes. What's the name of this restaurant? Semantics? So he's he's, he's completely anti-semantic. He's completely <laughs> full of shit. They do have tea. Wow. He just has to go to a different place, which, by the way, the other place is an actual restaurant with walls around oh, it and okay. tables. Yes. Well, now it's now he has to move, and he's all pissed. Well, when you have to move, it's, it's, it's the rules. So Luke goes, so you do have tea, and the guy's like, Technically, we have tea. I would just have to go over there. It's going to take a while. Come on! And, and the guy goes, does he want tea? And Luke goes, I don't know if he wants tea. Let me go find out if he wants tea. And this is all over wow. here. Wow, and he's and a he big walks, guy. Yeah, yeah. And he walks over, and he goes, do you want tea? And I go, not really. <laughs> but it's infuriating that this guy, this guy is giving me, this is a restaurant, and it's empty. I'm like, just let us fucking sit here. Who gives a shit? Yeah, that's a restaurant. This yes. is the lobby. And you do have tea. You just and didn't want to get tea. it. Wow. He was he was ex- what are you, exuding his power or whatever. And he had, this, is, this is this guy's moment. He's an asshole. He is. And uh, a dweeb. You're just like, what, what, what is this? And it was something, again, if it was crowded or whatever, and it's a lobby. And this is the other thing that's annoying is that he came in with the, if he had said, Guys, oh, this is—I feel like an asshole. You, you actually can't sit here. I yes. know you're staying in the hotel, and it feels like the lobby. But believe it or not, it's a restaurant, and they get pit- I get in trouble. It, yeah. Would you mind sitting over there? That goes a long way. Anything like that. But he's like, this, this is a restaurant. As though I'm an asshole. As right. though I walked into a doorway, at, like into a, a restaurant. Yes. And yes. walked past the thing, and no, no, I'm sitting here. Wow. And the other thing is from. Whatever a.m. till 4 p.m., it is the lobby. Oh, it's not a restaurant. Oh, my God. So at, at 3 o'clock, I can sit here like this <laughs> with my fucking cock out. <laughs> and at 4 p.m., all of a sudden, it's an impenetrable force yes, in the restaurant. Yes, exactly. 
Woo, man, I hope this guy hears this, because he needs to know about what we call a wall and a building and an establishment and a confined space. Hey, this was, guy's, he's all over the border. Hey, he was a jackass. I hope he's dead. Yeah. I hope someone spills hot tea on his tits. There you go. What's the name of this place? Let's shut it down. I have no idea. I don't know the hotel. I can't remember. It was a I fancy pants either. hotel. Nice hotel, by the Very way. Very nice. I sat in that lobby for nine days. <laughs> well, it's a hotel. It's a restaurant. I drank a tea. It was great. Uh, all right, we got to wrap it up. Okay, for God's okay. Sakes. Rupert's um, got to milk his tits or his kids or whatever. This Thursday, come on, baby. It's Friday. Fuck yes. me. Yes. This Friday. Special. August 18th, 10 p. Eastern. Woo! 7 Pacific, 9 Central, 8 Mountain Time. Come on, America. Watch it as it premieres. The algorithm, for God's sakes. I'll be in the chat. Come over if you're around. I assume you're working. Yeah. Have a little hang over there. Watch it live. Jump in the comments. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe. Yes. Hit all the shit. Yes. This is my last chance. The last shot. Last special ever. I disagree. Put the Venmo up. Put the PayPal up. D d donate. It's a free special. Not even, uh, you don't have to pay a streaming service. It's right there on YouTube. And watch the whole saga. You collect the whole set. You know, it's like a box set. You watch the first, the third, the second. Throw yes, the Netflix on. Like Star Wars. Great yeah. shot, Gold Leader. There you go. Exactly. It's this Friday, and uh, that's that. Also, I brought back Mindful Metal Jacket. Ari Shafir episode comes Ooh, out Thursday. The Karen Fian's in there. Luke Monis is in there. Uh, Andrew Chavon, everyone's favorite uh, Tuesday who bombed that one time. He's uh, hilarious. Yeah. It's a fun pod. Go subscribe to that. And then uh, next weekend, I'm in Dallas, Addison Improv. Oh, I love that club. Which I think I forgot to promote. So uh, get out there, Dallas. Addison Improv, good market. I haven't been there in a while. Come out to that. We got gays there. They're coming. And then, uh, oh, my God, we're in Philly tonight? Yeah. Oh, the 22nd. No, next, 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 Tuesday. next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, Philadelphia. Umar Khan's on. It's some theater. Give it a go. It's called Performing Arts or something. Oh, okay. There Pennsylvania you go. Pennsylvania Performing Arts, something like that. I tagged Helium in my post because I'm an idiot, but uh, we're at the theater. Yeah, you'll find it. Yeah, I'm, I'm all over the place. Uh, big tour still going on. It's called You Don't Say. MarkNormanComedy.com for tickets. Keep watching Soup to Nuts. Give it a double like on that Netflix. And... Uh, Get on the Patreon. The Patreon is cooking. It's the highest it's ever been. The live Woo. eps are up there. Speaking of Woo. Gillis, he's on. Soder's on. Uh, Giannis. Christie's Bennington. Bennington. Uh, what's her name? Nikki Glazer. Amy Schumer does make a guest appearance oh, that's right. for a brief second. Yeah, Nikki Michelle Glazer, Wolf. Wolf, Ari. The list goes on, and uh, we'll keep on keeping on. We'll see you at the, the live shows. We'll see you in Europe, and we'll uh, see you in Philly. And we're, we got another Gramercy on the books. We'll Possibly figure that out. Possibly October 3rd. July 3rd. Yeah. So keep a lookout. Praise Allah. Thank you. And keep on queefing. No one wants to be Thank you, Rupert.